ladies and gentlemen, what we have here is a 2019 F1 Smokums. This is a bad unit. This truck, a single cab, short bed, extremely rare color. It is such a cool truck, and I'm so glad we get to enjoy it for about a month before we give it to one of you guys. If you go to cleesmcfrawlin.com between today, the giveaway's already started, and December 9th, and buy a t-shirt like one of these, or a hat, or some sunglasses, stickers, whatever it is, every $5 you spend gets you an entry for this truck and $15,000 cash. So this is by far our most expensive giveaway yet. Oh frick, this guy wants to race me in a Z06. I'll be dang, isn't that a sight? Got Dr. Pepper in the air, and we've got some modifications going on for this thing today. Don't mind the paint, still needs to be buffed. Sam hasn't given it his touch yet, but at least it's all the same color. I'm really happy with the way it's turning out, but look at how good these brakes look. I'm so pumped up. In my last video, I talked about TBM, and we went over to their shop, and we got a set installed with the built specialty wheels, front and back. I also have another set for them for the street, but this is kind of still my radial setup for when we're at the track. Close. There's a couple things I still have to do to the car to get it ready for sick week. But traditionally at sick week, we've been running the quarter mile, 850 second street car class. But this is gonna be completely different coming up for 2023 because I'm gonna be doing the rowdy radial eighth mile class. The car I know already does like a 5.0 to the eighth because it did it when I did my seven second pass. So we know we can be really competitive. I know the other, Main competitive guy in the Rowdy Radio class is Andy Cook from Motion Raceworks in his GTO. So I have some things I wanna to do to the suspension today and that's what this video is about, to really strengthen it up because we're gonna be so hard on this drivetrain, on the transmission, the suspension. Everything just needs to be a lot tighter than it was before for that eighth mile because we're gonna be leaving the line as hard as we can. So let me show you what we're doing. your first time watching my channel, I'll give you guys a little brief overview on Dr. Pepper. This is my seven second LSX 427 98 millimeter turbo. Mustang that uh, this is a Texas speed LSX block with the VS racing 98 millimeter turbo. It is paired with a power glide and a gear vendor because we we use this car for drag and drive events. So it's really nice to have that overdrive when we're cruising on the street. In the rear end, it has a somewhat stock Ford 88 with Menser coilovers, uh, control arm relocating brackets on the lower upper lower control arms, any roll bar, and uh, you know, there's like a trans cooler. So, oh, big upgrade recently. If you guys hadn't seen my last video, we upgraded from the stock 1999 V6 Mustang brakes to finally some TBMs. These are the baddest brakes in the game. They look so good paired up with these Bella Specialties. I'm pretty much head over heels for them. I really, I really don't think I could have anything better than really nice brakes Wheels and tires on my car, it just looks so good. On the factory, I think it's like 79 to 04 Mustangs, these torque boxes are what they're called, where the lower and upper control arms mount into the unibody. Well, these need to be reinforced because they do tear. So there's a lower control arm box and an upper up here that needs to be reinforced. So LMR or late model restorations makes a torque box reinforcement kit and basically these plates mount up into a location here and then the uppers go up here and then they mount through the floor with some hardware and you can weld it in or bolt it in this is a, a pretty much a must for these cars when we're pushing them especially going five o's to the eighth because those stock torque boxes can actually rip and tear out of the car. So Doug Cook from TVM Brakes and Motion Raceworks told me that this is what they did for El Toro on their Fox body. He's like, hey man, it's really not that big of a deal. I did it myself during COVID, so you can do it too. And uh, basically I gotta get these wheels and tires off the car on the back. I do have it chalked up front, to keep it from rolling forward. Oh, another maintenance thing we're doing today is I'm getting transmission fluid on the ground every time I park Dr. Pepper. And that's because the gasket is bad in the trans pan. So we're gonna pull that out, put a new trans pan gasket in so she's not leaking anymore. 
and then she will be pre-dialed. Oh. Sick week rules also require any cars that are running faster than a 999 to have some kind of oil or fluid containment pan underneath the motor. So instead of doing a diaper, I'm going to endeavor on fabricating a containment pan that goes underneath the car so that if there is some kind of catastrophic failure, it doesn't, it gives you more of a chance to save the car and save yourself and the track, you know, because it's basically this pan trying to catch everything before you oil it down. So we're going to the wall or something scary like that. So I basically have to fabricate this pan that has to be removed so that we can do things like oil changes or work on the engine if we need to, that basically encapsulates the whole front or the whole engine area. Oh, look, a little leak here going on the oil return for the turbo. We gotta fix that up, but lots of little stuff, guys. Nothing too major, but this is the underside of Dr. Pepper if I've ever showed up before. Another upgrade I did recently was replace the stock wheel lugs. They were way too short for these front wheels. I put in some three inch rippers from Moroso. That way that the shank is sticking out past the lug nut, it's safer and it looks better and I just know it's better overall. I was never happy with the short studs and on the stock brakes, but I'm doing everything I can to make this car safer because, hey man, we only get one life. Yeah, our cars are our passion, but don't skimp out on the safety, guys. I replaced all the belts in this, seat belts in this thing. A lot of y'all were commenting in my last video that I wasn't wearing a seatbelt. I was wearing a seatbelt over my lap. I should be wearing them over my shoulders too when I'm on the street, but I was just going to the gas station, even though I know most accidents occur within two to three miles of your home, because that's where you most frequently drive, but I will buckle up more, I promise. But that's uh, that's pretty much a recap on the car of where it's at. Oh, we also did just upgrade the rear axles when we were putting the TBMs on. That way we've got these half inch stud rippers right here. So we look like we know what we're doing. Okay, so I have another wheels off since we put the new brakes on and we clearly have some kind of fluid leaking in the right rear of the, cor right rear of the car. So coming up over here, I was looking at it and it appears as if we were leaking rear diff fluid where we put the new axle on. So we're gonna have to take all this off and get this rear sealed up, but that's okay. It's really not that big of a job. Oh well, it's just the little things like this. When you dive into a product, you start finding other things that need to be done, but I'd rather find all this stuff now. Normally when I'm working on this car, we are grinding up until the week of like sick week or race week or something like that. And we get it done like the day before. So it's nice that I have a couple months with the car to drive it on the street and know it's street worthy and work out little quirks and bugs like this. So we're not fixing it on the side of the road in the middle of nowhere, Florida. So as I'm tearing into this thing, I'm coming across another maintenance thing that I'm going to make sure is good. All these Heim joints on the control arms, I'm going to lubricate because James Tall had one lock up and they've had issues with mullet locking up control arm times and then the car can't hook. So I am going to make sure that these things are lubed up and greased up so that we don't have an issue like that. All right, we wrapped up putting the torque box reinforcement plates in. We got one in the upper control arm on both sides, as well as a plate, let me show you, underneath here on the lower control arm side as well. And that way it'll reinforce these plates because this is some pretty soft metal top and bottom. It's known for bending or cracking or splitting. And so these plates help hold it all together. Obviously it's not as ideal as having like a really nice torque box set up, but these stock factory so these factory Mustang four link setups are pretty efficient and the car's been fine how it is already. I'm just trying to be ahead of the curve to make sure nothing happens. So now that this is done, we still have to put training fluid back in it after I place that oil pan or that trans pan gasket. We are leaking oil out of the front of the motor, but it's also been sitting like this for a while. So I know that it's kind of sloshed to the front, but car's pretty much back together. We got Cletus and cars tomorrow. They're drag racing tonight. I'm not sure if I'm gonna run the car tonight or not because I feel a little bit underprepared and I've got a lot of time and money into this thing and I want it to be right instead of just goofing around and with uh, with the boys at the track. But I still have to wire like the trans brake and some Holly stuff before we run it at the track, which is pretty easy to do. It's only about a half an hour worth of work. So we've got about six, seven hours before they start running at the track. So we're gonna keep thrashing on this thing and hopefully get it out there and have some fun this weekend with it.
charge bad to the bone. That uh, Circle D converter is so spicy. I had, uh, I sent it into them to have them tighten it up a little bit and she still gets on the chip building like seven pounds of boost within like two seconds. So she is so ready to rip. We've been grinding on this thing all day today. The only thing we don't have set up is the bump and I'm just having trouble setting that up. I've got to get my settings right. And uh, I think we're ready to hit the track with this thing tonight. Oh, it's been a while. All right, all right, y'all. I got this new operator shifter from Motion Raceworks installed. Listen to how clean that their built-in air or er, air cylinder works when you shift it from uh, one to two here on this power glide. Look at this. Boink. That's pretty sweet. These guys make incredible stuff. Guys, we are at Cletus and Cars, November 18th. We are at Bradenton Motorsports Park, and this is going to be the first time I'm making a pass to Dr. Pepper. The car's back. It's back together. We are ready. I'm going to show you what we're doing in the tune. Nate and I are going pretty conservative. Even though we drew Kevin KSR our first round in his blue Camaro. We know that car is far and super deep into the sevens, but apparently he's having some problems. So we're still going to line up and race and see how it does, but let me show you what we got going on in the tune. All right, so when Kevin, when I made the seven second pass, we were demanding 26 pounds of dome pressure at about mm, three seconds into the pass. But we're bringing it all the way down to 16 since the car hasn't made any passes yet on its fresh rebuild. Uh, but we are set and ready. We got Ignite filled up in the tank. But check out Cheyenne's new Mr. Pib. All right, Chad, tell me what you got going on here, bud. What I have here is an original paint scheme and I looked all over for it. Yeah? Yeah, her name. What's her, her name? name? Is uh, Mr. Pib. Unbelievable, dude. Dr. Pepper, Mr. Oh, Pib. Are we running tonight? We have to. <laughs> we'll run, but we have to. I'm only running an eight. Oh, are you? Is it eighth mile car? Yeah, it's an eighth mile car. <laughs> what? Well, it's got a big blower on it, right? A71 or something? It, it looks like that. It's just a big hole. It's not. It's, don't tell me it's cored out. Is it a real blower? It's a real blower. Okay, good. Yeah, it's good to go. Well, she, she yeah, sounds healthy. You'll be impressed. Tells you it's a Camaro right there on the windshield. <laughs> uh, yeah. Mr. Pibb's gonna look hilarious. It man. would, dude. Wrap the whole car like a Mr. Pibb can. <laughs> Are we doing it? I guess so. I heard you so, had problems. Oh yeah, problems. Like got here late. Like I wanted a test run, didn't get it. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens, man. Yeah. That's gonna be fun. Which you want to lane? You got preference? I don't care. It's been, okay. I haven't ran this car since April, so you and I are in the same boat. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little bit of a throwing a dart at a dartboard. So. Yep, yep, just driving a straight line. Yeah. We got it. We'll see, what we'll see it out there, Kevin. All right. Show me what I did. I know I let out at like the 3.30, but. We got, there's some light. There she is. Okay. 125 to the 60 though. It's not terrible. Take it. 117, you were moving. You definitely treat me pretty good. Well, not too good. It's a little slow for me, but. Yeah. You, I'm usually like 50 to 60, but. All right, well, you know. We'll take it. But she lift. It was breaking up really bad. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, so. Well, yeah. Like, change something, right? We're kind of throwing some stuff at it. Yeah. It happens. It does. Well, I'm going to go get ready. All right. They really 
splice drop on the leave there. I forgot to pull the data log and show you guys a video of what was going on with that pass, but we figured that the car is actually blowing through the converter really quickly into the, into the run. So it's quickly getting up to about 7,000 RPM within about a second and a half, and then it's holding there. So that's when I let out. So we're gonna try and throw in some thicker trans fluid, maybe some hydraulic fluid. If any of y'all have any suggestions on what we should do before we take it to the track next time, let me know in the comments below. But by the way, guys, there's a huge giveaway going on at clevesmcfarland.com. Get yourself a Dr. Parker hat. There's tons of merch. There's Mopar shirt now for all of you Dodge guys. We still have some of the Dr. Pepper shirts left, maybe only like 20 of them. So go get them while they last. Make sure you subscribe, like, leave me a comment, and we'll see you on the next episode. As a fellow car guy, I know it's super easy to forget to take care of yourself, especially when you're at the track. We're all drinking Mountain Dew and Dr. Pepper. This toothbrush is only $39. It's a great electric toothbrush. It's what I use every day. Normally they're $59, but if you click the link in the description below or use my coupon code QDNASK, you can get this toothbrush for only 39 bucks. Buy one for yourself, your girlfriend, whoever. They are an awesome toothbrush. It's basically the same thing as a Sonicare except a tenth of the price. So go get one. They send you a new brush at every three months so you don't have to worry about it. It's a great deal. Guys, like an idiot, I forgot to pull the data log and show you guys a video of what was going on with that pass, but we figured that the car is actually blowing through the converter really quickly into the, into the run. So it's quickly getting up to about 7,000 RPM within about a second and a half, and then it's holding there. So that's when I let out. So we're gonna try and throw in some thicker trans fluid, maybe some hydraulic fluid. If any of y'all have any suggestions on what we should do before we take it to the track next time, let me know in the comments below. But by the way, guys, there's a huge giveaway going on at clevesmcfarland.com. Get yourself a Dr. Parker hat. There's tons of merch. There's Mopar shirt now for all of you Dodge guys. We still have some of the Dr. Pepper shirts left, maybe only like 20 of them. So go get them while they last. Make sure you subscribe, like, leave me a comment, and we'll see you on the next episode.